So recently I've been making a video based on UFC fighter rankings that are a little bit skewed. So for an example, think like Paulo Costa, a guy who's ranked number six in the world yet hasn't really had a win over a contender in a really long time. Or Colby Covington, a guy whose last win that he got who was on momentum was like RDA back in like 2018, I think. So think those type of fighters. And I was going through the fighters, guys. I'm looking at the rankings, and I kind of got stumped when I got to Dustin Poirier because he's ranked number three, and he has merits. He has four wins over top 15 fighters. He does. He beat Michael Chandler, whose ranking is also in question. He's going to be a part of that video for sure. Uh, <laughs> Justin Gaethje, who was, you know, that his win over Justin Gaethje was five years ago, and they just fought again, and Gaethje won, but still a win over Justin Gaethje nevertheless. Dan Hooker, which in hindsight was a great win, and Diego Ferreira. He beat Diego back in the day. So he has beat four of the active top 15 lightweights. However, here's my problem with Dustin Poirier. He's ranked number three. He's ranked at the top. And after UFC 291, he was asked by a reporter, who does he want to fight next? You know, does he want to fight a contender? Does he want to fight a big name? And Dustin said, he kind of put an end to it. And he said, I don't want to fight contenders. I'm at the point in my career where I only want to fight big fights. Fair enough. I totally agree with that. He knows he's probably got two, three good years left at the top, and he wants to cash in on that. I would want to do the same in his position. However, here's my issue. On Twitter, someone made a post saying, who's the best UFC fighter to never win the undisputed title? I think Dustin Poirier might have even been in the title of the post, and Dustin gets on Twitter and replies like, hold up, cuh. You know, I'm not done yet. Chill. That's my Dustin Poirier impression, and that's, that's an issue. That's an issue. Unless he plans on moving divisions, I don't. he's not going to go back down to featherweight. He's said that too many times. He's too big. And welterweight, the guys are too big for him. Dustin Poirier is only 5'9". He does weigh around 200 pounds, you know, walking around weight. But I just don't really see him at this point in his career moving up to welterweight and going on a title run. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm looking at that division. Dustin has a lot of very difficult matchups. People like to... to Clown on Bilal, uh, all, you know, fair game to that. But Bilal is a good fighter. Bilal is in his physical prime right now. He's a good, well-rounded wrestler. That's a tough fight for, for Dustin. Shavkat Rachmanov, he's on the come up. That's a very hard fight for Dustin. You know, so these welterweight matchups, I mean, even Colby is a hard matchup for Dustin. So I don't think he's talking about moving up to welterweight and going on a title run. He's talking about staying at lightweight and winning the belt. Now, you can't do that and not fight guys uh, with momentum, contenders that are ranked under you. I have no problem with Dustin Poirier being ranked at number three, but he has to be open to the idea of fighting Armin Sarukian, Matt Frivola, you know, Gamrot, like these guys that are ranked under him that are on win streaks that deserve a crack at the top. I'm, I'm sick of fighters getting in the top five and, and just sitting there and not fighting the guys underneath them. Like I said, Paulo Costa. Colby Covington, this type of fighter. And I don't want Dustin Poirier to go down that route. I don't. I really don't. I like Dustin Poirier a lot. I love watching him fight. But I don't like him sitting at number three and saying, I'm not going to fight contenders underneath me, yet I still want to fight for the belt. That's that's bullshit. That's not fair to those guys underneath you. You were that guy at one point. Dustin was that guy at one point who was that contender. And someone gave him a chance to level up, get you know move up the rankings. Um and work his way towards that title fight. So I I just don't I don't like this. I don't like the UFC also letting fighters do this. You know, like Colby Covington, who is who has sat in the top five for years and not fought a guy on momentum. You know, Jorge Monsvidal coming off two losses and Tyrone Woodley coming off two losses. That's on a guy on momentum. That's that's a guy on the downfall. You know, not to mention they were both 40 years old. I don't want Dustin doing that. You know, I, I don't want Dustin fighting Michael Chandler again to get his title shot. You know, that's, I like Michael Chandler, not a, not a good win to get you into a title shot. You know, like, I, I don't want to see him and Justin Gaethje doing a trilogy immediately, and then the winner gets a title shot. I like both fighters. I love, I'm a huge Justin Gaethje fan. I want to see one of these guys ranked from, like, 5th to, like, 12th getting a shot at the top five. I, I am sick and tired of these fighters just sitting in the top five and not fighting. You need to be fighting. Uh, another good one is Brian Ortega. 
Brian Ortega is a guy who has not won a fight since Korean Zombie in 2020, yet is still ranked number three. Maybe maybe Brian Ortega has some dirt on Dana White or something. Maybe maybe Brian Ortega has some some information that that the UFC doesn't want us to know, and that's how he has stayed in that spot because I think it's ridiculous. But I love just I love Dustin Poirier. I would love to see him become a champion, and I want to see him in big fights. But he's got to fight a contender if he wants to get a ch- a championship shot in the lightweight division again. He's already got two shots. He's already had two title fights in the lightweight division. So he's gonna he's gotta earn that third shot. It's very rare that a fighter gets a third chance. Uh it seems like Justin Gaethje's gonna get one here soon, but he earned that. He earned that. He fought Rafael Faziv and beat Fiziev in the stand-up. I thought that was so impressive. A lot of I feel like a lot of people kind of downplayed that win and said that that maybe Fiziev isn't that bad. I just think Justin Gaethje is that good. I thought he was going to win that fight going into it, and I was so happy to see how he won the fight. And then he goes into the Dustin rematch, and everyone thinks that Dustin's going to win, and he head kicks Dustin in the second round. Like The guy has shown that he is still improving, and he's willing to fight contenders. I like to see that. I want to see Dustin Poirier fight a contender. I I would also like to see him fight Benil, like I laid out in my little roadmap. You know, fight Benil. I'd like to see him fight Benil. Whoever wins that fight fights a contender. Him or Benil, whichever one, needs to fight an Armand, Matt Frivola, Gamrod, hell, Dan Hooker, you know, like one of these lower-ranked guys who is on a win streak. I don't want Michael Chandler losing to Connor and then fighting, you know, Dustin Poirier again. I don't want that. I want, You know, and for Chandler, I want Chandler to fight a guy ranked below him too, just to be fair. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Who should fight who? The lightweight division is so much fun. It's such a talent-rich division, but I can't help to feel like sometimes getting those guys in the top five to fight is kind of a pain. But guys, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.